All right, so let's get started on the main Tableau website. And what we're going to do is first take a look at the three main product offerings that they have. First off, we have Tableau Desktop, and this is essentially just you downloading the application and working with it on your local machine. Next is Tableau Server, and Tableau Server gives you the full control over the environment. You are going to have your own dedicated server to do whatever you want with Tableau, handle all the configurations, all that. And last is Tableau Online, and this is almost like the opposite of server in the sense that everything is hosted on the cloud. So instead of having your own maybe on-prem Tableau server that you are managing, Tableau Online is offloading that to Tableau's managed solutions. Let's now take a look at pricing. And when it comes to pricing, it'll be broken up typically by the hosted version, the cloud, so Tableau Online, and then the managed server. There's three options. We have Creator, Explorer, and Viewer. And each of these, as you would expect, have different levels of control and permissions. As a creator, you have the ability to create data sources and create dashboards and pretty much do everything that you would need to do with Tableau. Explorer is more for like power users, I'd say. So people who you want to give a custom data set, but also allow them to build their own kind of self-service style dashboards. And then Tableau Viewer is just somebody who's going to interact with something that you give them, but they're not necessarily building anything new. And now if we compare this to Tableau Server, we can see the creator license is the same cost, 70, but Explorer is a little bit less. Again, this is for the server and not the Tableau Online, which is fully managed on the Tableau side of things. All right, so let's go back and now let's start our own free trial and get set up with this. We're going to get Tableau Online and set this up for ourselves. So I'll go through and add my information here. And I just went through and did that and you can go ahead and do that too and you'll get something in your email that asks you essentially to confirm your information. Now that we've verified our email, we can go through and officially set up the rest of our Tableau site. Remember, this is a Tableau online, so it's not our own server. And Tableau is going to organize everything into your own site, so you give it a name, pick the location that makes most sense for you, and then activate. Now we're greeted with this video, we can click through this. Are you a Salesforce customer? And so if you didn't, no, by now, obviously, Tableau is or was acquired by Salesforce, so that's why it's going to uh, ask you some of these things, and it can seamlessly integrate with a lot of Salesforce stuff now. So now here we are on the main page. Let's take a quick lay of the land. We can see things are given to you by default, some shortcuts up here for us to quickly hop in between projects and manage our users and all this stuff. So let's go through here one at a time down this side panel. First, we have our favorites. So once we build some projects and some dashboards, we can add them here. Recent, as you would expect, recent ones we've looked at, things that have been shared, recommended. Personal space, this is where you can kind of save some local copies of things. Collections, explore, this is where you can look at really all of the things in your organization or on your site. We have different projects, workbooks, data sources, all sorts of stuff. Again, we're going to see this once we build out our own, what this looks like. External assets, this is where we can manage databases and files. So for example, text files, CSVs, all sorts of stuff. Here we have our users, and right now it's just me, but this is where you can manage all of the users on your server. We can add people manually or import, and we can get a breakdown of our available licenses as well. You can group people, group users as you need. Next is schedules, and schedules are these pre-built options, uh, common options for you to refresh your data. So a lot of times on Tableau, you'll have your data sources saved as something that's called a, an extract, and you wanna update your extract, and this is what allows you to do it. It's kind of Tableau's copy of your data, but you want it to be updated on a schedule, and that's how you can do that. Jobs, tasks, site status, so all of these things. And within here, we can see we have some pre-built dashboards and reports. And this is nice to give you a quick snapshot of what's going on and maybe some of the common reports where things are slow, stuff like that. And then just general settings. Uh, we won't go through each of these individually, but you can customize your site however you want. Um, all right, so now let's create our first project. Let's finally get our hands on this. We'll do new project and I'll call this demo project and give it a description. And you can see you can format this description if you want. Let's add some of the stuff here, see if this does anything. Yeah, that's it. So let's now go ahead and create. Won't spend too much time here. Now, if we go to Explore, we can see Demo Project is here. It's created by me. I guess it didn't mark that up the way I wanted, but we can add workbooks now. So now we could see we're organizing it a certain way. So let's go ahead and create a workbook, and this will be just like a typical dashboard that you would create as an analyst or a, a developer. By default, it is connected with us on this trial account to a super sore data source. And we can see here, this is a live connection to an Excel sheet. 
that Excel sheet was in that previous external asset. And just to reiterate again, there's a difference between live, meaning it's a direct query, and an extract, which means it's saving another copy of the data. The benefits of that is typically faster, kind of removes an extra call to a live connection. Now files, we could, again, we could just drop it in. We have, like I said, direct connections. So if you wanted to go to a database, here are the pre-built ones. Common one is, is Snowflake in the modern data stack. So here's how you would go through and sign in and whatnot. And another nice thing that they give you here is some starter dashboards. So just some things to get you going, maybe give you some inspiration to build a dashboard for your team. Let's go back, let's select this Superstore data source and we'll connect to it. Again, it's a live connection. So it's going to read it exactly as it is and render this stuff. Now on the left here, we can see it breaks it down by tables. In our case, we just have the three tables. It recognizes all the different columns and breaks it down, different hierarchies. It's going to recognize from what you have and kind of interpret the data a certain way. Now all this is customizable, but we can see it also gives it the name. It kind of assumes the data type. We can change this however we want. And here's where all of the measures are going to be. So in, in Tableau, we're going to split it up between dimensions and measures, and measures being more of the calculated values, things that you're going to aggregate. And if you right click, there's more options here. We can duplicate it, rename, create calculated fields, pretty standard stuff for what you would expect in an enterprise tool like this. Like we said, there's a difference between dimensions and measures here in Tableau. This order ID, it's recognizing that it is dimension, and it probably is, but if you wanted to change it to a measure, you could do that by just converting to measure and it'll put it down on the other side and that enables other features within Tableau for you to use. Another option here is to describe it so you can see some of the example values, the data type, exactly where it's coming from, if it's renamed, all sorts of stuff right here. Now we can easily go back in and edit our data source if we wanted to. So if we wanted to rename some stuff from the beginning or keep certain fields out, do anything directly to the data source itself and not in the workbook, we can come through here uh, and make those changes. For example, maybe we wanna hide something. We have it coming through in the data source, but we don't want people to use it. We can hide it and uh, do that here. We can rename the data source. And here we can see a preview of what this data looks like. And uh, the table we're on. You can open up and we can see how all this stuff works together. So we can see the orders table is joining within people. And so when you build your project and you're building out your workbook, you can join different things together and Tableau will automatically know how they're supposed to relate. For example, maybe you wanted to group orders by people or by returns. You can just drag and drop and Tableau will automatically be able to interpret what's going on and group it for you and join it all for you behind the scenes because you set it there. Some other options here from the from the worksheet. Again, just other ways to customize your sheet. One of the best things about Tableau is visually how you can make it look. I think that's what separates it from some of the other competitors. And these are the ways where you can get in here and then really poke around to make it look however you want. Now on the analytics tab, you have pre-built in analytics options, so lines and aggregates and stuff like that. All right, so let's go ahead and add something to this workbook here. So let's add order ID. And right away we can see it lists them all out by default it's just putting it as a table and within the rows here it's added the order id pill here and we can move this uh, up to columns and it would put it uh, all the way across but that's going to be way too long uh, in this case but now we have uh, measures and here we can start to see how this is going to work together and because it's a measure it's understanding that it's a number and it's a measure think kind of like data warehousing concepts by default it's a sum but we can change that however we want how do we want this data to be represented? Automatic is just going to make it as a table, but you can get really creative with this as you get different types of data that can be represented different ways. All right, let's add another one. Let's add sales now. And now that we have two measures, you can see it put both from there. Measures that we have are represented in the column, so it just puts them all up there. Let's go ahead and add another dimension, see what happens here. So when we add a dimension, we can see it's automatically grouping it into subgroups and we can see all this stuff worked together very quickly. We can see the sheet one here. This is dynamic. It's based on the tab, which is nice. So let's go ahead and change this. Let's change this to profit and sales by customer. And by clicking OK, it's going to dynamically change it to match the tab, which is nice because it's kind of an easy way to see what things are called. Next, let's add a dashboard and a dashboard is really a collection of worksheets. And what we can do, we can see here we have our sheets and you can go to the sheet itself. So we know in this case, we just made this sheet. But now let's say we have 
a dashboard. We want, we have multiple sheets that we want to all put together. It's easy as just dragging and dropping it on here. And this is a typical workflow that you'll see. You'll create your worksheets and then you'll bring things together into a dashboard or multiple dashboards. And we can customize the dashboard now in their own different ways and add some things to make it a little more user friendly. We can create a dashboard title, which again is going to be different um, than the worksheet, but will also be dynamic. So we can change this called the sales overview. And again, it's going to dynamically change that and show it to us here. What's cool about the dashboards is we can see how it looks on different devices. So maybe for mobile, we can see what that looks like. We can adjust what we're looking at uh, and how we want to edit this so we can get a good idea of what different users on different devices are going to see. All right, so let's add another worksheet. Let's, let's go through this again. Now we're, we got our, our bearings a little bit. Let's try to take a look at orders shipped by date. So let's start with ship date. We'll drag this in here. It recognizes the underlying values and brings them in. And we'll drop quantity because we want to know how many were shipped on a specific date. But obviously, we don't always just want a table, right? We want something else. And up here in the right is where you can get all the other options. So if we go to show me, here are the different visual options that we have. We can see pie charts, bar graphs, all sorts of stuff so that we're not just looking at a table. So if we do a horizontal bar chart, bar graph, here's what this would look like. Here's another one broken down with colors. And this is where, again, where I think Tableau really shines is the visual part because there's a lot of really cool ways that you can customize this and it just, it, it works really seamlessly with the data all groups together and it just, it just looks nice. Because the underlying column is a date, it'll allow us to break it up very easily by quarter, by day, by date, year, whatever we want. And so we can just leave it here. Just pointing out here that there are other options to add labels, all sorts of customization uh, that we want to. We can change the size of the uh, markers themselves or the bar charts. And this, this type of functionality will be the same with most of the visuals. You can change the color. Obviously, you want to have the color match maybe your company uh, color scheme or something like that. Okay, so let's just let's leave it at this and we'll give this worksheet a name, which again should dynamically change the name of the sheet. Call this sales by quarter. And let's now add this to our dashboard. We can see it's over here. Drag it, drop it over. Maybe we want it uh, up here instead. And there it is. So we can see now we're, we're kind of building this out slowly on how everything's working together. One thing we haven't touched on yet is filtering. And what you can do is if you click on one, you can say, you know, maybe keep only, and that'll only isolate that data. But we can see it's just for that worksheet. So you can filter and, and exclude and do whatever you want for one worksheet, but it's not impacting the other. So we'll get to that and, and understand how we can do that, but you can add filters for each worksheet specifically. But one of the cool options of the dashboard is you can use one visual as a filter for the other. So if we click on one and select use as filter, now we can see whatever we've selected on the bottom one is also filtering the top one. So if we just say Aaron Hawkins, all of the data at the top is filtered by just him, double click and it resets it back. But that's just working kind of a one way filter uh, by default with the one visual. Let's go back to our worksheet and see how we can add a filter here. So we can see over here that there is a filter, but we don't actually how do we use this? What do we do with it? If we click this drop down and select show filter, it'll show up on the right here for us. And we can see here are the different measures that we're seeing. And it, again, it's recognizing what them, they all are, but it's only selecting the two. Now we can hide that again if we want. Uh, but let's add another filter. Let's say customer name. We want to use this as a filter. And here's the wizard that we're going to walk through. It's going to say, I know, how do you want this to filter? Do you want by default, do you want all of them? Do you want some sort of wild card uh, condition for what shows up? How, what do you want to show up in this filter as, as options? So we'll leave this as a default and just allow everything to come through. And now let's say show. Now there are ways we can change how this looks. We can see it's a list right now. Maybe we want it to be a drop down instead because there's too many options. Uh, so we can do that. And as we can see here, this will in real time change based on our filter. But because the worksheet is linked to our dashboard, it's also filtering the dashboard. But we can see now it's a little out of sync with the other visual. Let's go ahead and put all that back. And if we, we go back to sales overview, we can see it's all, all the data is back here. So how can we filter them both together? 
let's go uh, right. Let's click on this option here and go to filters and we can see it's giving the ones from the worksheet and we can add it directly to the dashboard. Now this filter is still only linked to that one worksheet, even though we can see it on the dashboard, it's not filtering both of them. It's just filtering that worksheet, but there's a way that we can uh, change this so that it does impact both. And we do that by going to this drop down and selecting apply to worksheets. Right now we can see it's only this worksheet, but we can change whatever we want. We can do all of them in the data source or just selected worksheets. Let's say we want it to be both of them, or maybe you had a bunch and you only wanted to select a few. Uh, that's how you could do this. We can change the way it looks. Now we clicked any of these and both visuals on the dashboard are playing together really nicely and you can filter them all at the same time. And this is a pretty typical workflow that you'd see. So imagine again, you're building all of these worksheets, you're putting them in the dashboards, kind of getting them to look the way that you want and then giving the filter and the different options for your users to play around with. And here's just some more options on how to format the layout. All right, so I think we've done a good job so far building this out. I mean, obviously this is pretty simple, but you can see the workflow. Let's go ahead and save this. And to save this, we're going to go to publish as, because really what we're doing is we're on Tableau Online. We're publishing this to the server, the online cloud server. Let's save this as sales report. We'll put in our demo project. We can decide if we want the sheets to show as tabs and we'll see what that looks like. Now we can see it saved it. Let's go to our report and here we are. We're in our sales report. We can see each individual worksheet as well as the dashboard. These are stored under views. And if we click on data sources, we can see the data source that's connected, which is Superstore data source. We don't have any subscriptions or anything like that. And another cool option is lineage. So data dictionaries, data lineage is really important. And what we can see here is exactly where it comes from. I mean, any user can come in here and see this and we can see uh, kind of the history of where this comes into play and where it came from. So let's take a look at this. Let's preview this as if we were a user. Here we are, we can see here's our dashboard and up here we can see the tabs. So this is what we meant by saving the different worksheets as tabs. That's what it looks like. Let's make some changes now and show how we can deploy this to uh, our personal space. Let's, have, let's see this workflow. So what we'll do is we'll come in here. Let's, let's make some changes that make it obvious. Let's say we get rid of that worksheet from the dashboard. Save this as sales report uncheck this box and save it to our personal space. And the goal here is to show you that this will be different on the site. All right, looking here, now we're in our personal space. So again, this is, imagine you're making changes and you just wanna test out the changes. And we can see it got rid of that and you can feel confident that you can make changes and test it out without your end user seeing the difference. All right, let's say we wanna add something to our favorites. Add it to your star and it's gonna show up in your favorites. It's as simple as that. And then now we can easily come back in here and download, share, edit, rename, all the stuff we wanna do. Look at the revision history. We can see, obviously we just have one, but if you have a bunch of people working on this, you can see the history of this. So now we are all set. We've, we've built this report, we created a worksheet, added a dashboard, and we're ready for our users to start working with it.